Hey guys, how you doing today? Look at me, I'm like freshly shaven. Look at that, I'm like clean. <laughs> uh, just got off work, just gonna head home. Nice relaxing day. Getting colder, had to whip out the winter jacket this time. Look at me, I'm in my winter gear, it's happening. Soon I'll, I'll have to be doing full scarves and things and I'll be like this the whole time I'm talking to you, it'll be happening. The, uh, um, so Ward Smith, who's been one of, uh, uh, who's been a follower of mine for a little while now, uh, he's always been very kind to me, very nice. Uh, uh, thanks Ward. He asked a question that I think is worth talking about. Um, what do I think is the role of entrepreneurs uh, and project managers in a non-capitalist society? Okay, well, let's break down what it looks like in a capitalist society, and then let's break down what I think it should look like uh, in a non-capitalist society, okay? So, the way it works now is that for an entrepreneur, so somebody who has an idea, right? And let's just pretend like it's the ideal situation. So, I have a new idea. I'm an entrepreneur, right? I, I'm throwing a ball against the wall trying to... Uh, Put something together, uh, whether it be a business or an invention or some kind of thing like that. I've got a plan. I've got an idea, and I'm gonna move forward with it. Uh, what do I need? Capital. That's what I need. Um, well, what do you actually need, right? You need uh, probably an office, right? Probably a place to actually do the work. Um, maybe you need a storefront, right? Maybe you just need a storage area, right? Uh, maybe. Uh, uh, but you definitely need capital to buy the goods, right? If you're an inventor, okay? So let's just say capital. That's what you need. You need money. So, you got the money. <laughs> so, you've got to convince an investor, right? Somebody, uh, uh, a person who has capital. A capitalist. You need to convince someone who has capital that what you're doing is a good idea. Uh, now, the, here's where the tension actually happens, because you don't have to answer to anything in a capitalist society except the, the question, uh, will it be profitable? Will it make money? It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if it's good or if it's bad. There's no questions of... Uh, moral consideration, there's no questions of ethics or anything like this. It's just, will it make money? So, if you are, I don't know, this is just off the top of my head, so I'm going to create a really bad example, but it's, it's uh, you'll get what I'm talking about. If you are, uh, if your business is going to the state over, and killing all their wolves and deer and everything to get their fur so that you can sell it in your state. Um, well, that's great for you and for the people you're selling to because they don't have to deal with the consequences or the negative aspect of what your business model is, right? You're going into another region destroying the ecosystem and destroying the environment of a group of people uh, who were, were never going to be the buyers or the beneficiaries of your business model in the first place. Uh, and to do it, you just needed enough capital to uh, bribe local leadership, right, which is common, and, uh, and to set up the business and all of that. And so forget about the people, forget about the suffering that you're creating, forget about the destruction that you're creating. Uh, it's going to make money. And it is going to make money, right? It's going to make good money. Because the people who are buying the product are not inflicted with the suffering that the business creates. This is common in capitalism. Like, this is a common and regular occurrence in capitalism, that capitalism uh, creates suffering for workers or for people who are exploited or for people who live in regions where there are like toxic waste dumps and slums uh, or carcinogens in the air, things like this. Um, but they don't care about that. Those people are poor. Who cares about them, right? They've been abandoned. They've been thrown out of the system. So forget about them. What matters are the buyers and of course the capitalists, 
they want their money. And that's how the capitalist system works. So, you can see why I think it's a failure, right? That you're not actually answering, uh, you're not actually responding to the needs of the populace in a meaningful way, right? You're trading the things that people actually rely on, clean air, clean water, uh, a strong natural environment, for uh, junk to distract rich people. Uh, fur coats, toys, right? Just junk to distract them from the sort of uh, uh, natural existential dread that exists in everybody's life, right? And capitalists are weak, so they don't have the like moral fortitude to be able to actually put forward uh, a meaningful front when it comes to facing their own sort of existential dread, right? They don't actually, uh, they don't actually have like a moral core or a moral center to be able to actually place their feet upon and say, uh, this is where we'll work f from and to be able to have the strength and fortitude to say no, right? Because all they're interested in is money for themselves. They're not actually interested in clean air, clean water for other people. They want those things for themselves, but they don't care if they, if other people get it. Um, so shift over. What would it look like in a non-capitalist society, right? Uh, whatever you want to call that, a socialist society, a communist society, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so first and foremost, like there's a, there's a big question. Uh, I'll skip over this. There, there is a big question about like, well, will your society use money or not? I generally believe that money gets used no matter what you do, right? That you can't actually get rid of the money. Uh, if you try, it'll just show up some other way. There will be some kind of common currency that exists. It, it, it will occur. And, uh, like, you'd have, an, you'd have just an easy time trying to get rid of writing, right? Like, it'd, it'd be just the same thing. Like, uh, uh, you can abolish writing all you want and punish people for writing all you want, and it's going to survive. Because it's in us. It's built in us, right? We, we have it. It's not something that we're going to not do. Uh, and I think money works in that kind of same way. The difference is uh, uh, between a capitalist society and a non-capitalist society, as I talked about in my last video, so I won't belager this point, which is uh, in a non-capitalist society, we won't worship money. Money won't be the way that we uh, dictate ourselves mor morally. Like, I actually believe that we should just cap earnings at, like, and, like, if somebody asks me seriously, like, what do I seriously think we should cap earnings at? $100,000. I think once you have $100,000, you're set. You don't need any more. There's no incentive that is beneficial, right, f uh, for anybody. Uh, not even the person who's getting the money. Uh, and $100,000 is more than enough to uh, uh, secure... Uh, any kind of big toy you want, any kind of car, any kind of house, any kind of thing, right? Like, just $100,000, you make any more than that, too bad, it goes away. Uh, and that way you create a society that doesn't have these massive distortions, where a single individual can have uh, uh, more power than a full third of the entire nation, which is exactly what's happening right now, right? The wealthiest billionaires, like the top 10 billionaires, let me get this number completely right, I believe it's the top 10 billionaires right now have the same amount of wealth as the bottom third of the nation, right? So that means 10 people have more financial power and authority in uh, what goes on in the society than a full third, one third, 33% of the society. It's unacceptable. It's unacceptable. Uh, and yet here we are uh, living in it, living with it, and no wonder the society is falling apart, right? Because you're asking... Because even if those 10 people are like, have the best intentions in the world, they don't have the administrative power, right? They don't have the administrative power and the administrative ability to actually take care of these problems that arise, right? They, they're not gods. They can't look into the ether and actually make things happen, right? The way that if you just gave the capital to the individuals who are facing the problems directly on the front line, uh, i.e. in their own lives, they'd be able to resolve these problems themselves much more easily without any administrative difficulty whatsoever, right? Uh, 
And so this is the reason why this whole system fails, is because you can't, billionaires can't respond to the day-to-day -day needs of the populace, even if they wanted to, which they don't. But even if they wanted to, they couldn't. Uh, okay, so getting back to the question at hand. Let's say we've got money, okay, so there's money. Let's say there's a reasonable cap on how much money people can have, right? Uh, but people still want to create stuff, right? They still want to do stuff. They still want to be a part of a community. They still want to be involved in stuff. Like, I was in the theater for 15 years, guys. I can tell you pretty straightforwardly, people want to be involved in big projects. They want to do things. They want to entertain people. They want to help people. They do. They want to do this. Uh, if they didn't, then why are people throwing their lives against this, like, the the, the arts? What What is that? You're telling me that if, if, if monetary gain is the only thing that incentivizes people, just spend a week talking to actors and writers and directors it, at your local theaters. You'll find out pretty quickly, like, these people are not doing this for the money, right? They're not doing it for the money. Are you crazy? I mean, obviously, if you're a capitalist or a defender of capitalism, you are a bit insane, but fine. Like, there, there are deep incentives that live within us that go well beyond the monetary gain. And so how would we structure this? How would we structure it so that I've got an idea, I'm an entrepreneur, right? Like I want, I need to talk to somebody about getting capital together. Well, the, the problem with our current system, right, is that it's not in the control of the people. It's not in the control of the populace. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't have banks but I am saying that the bank should be owned by the public and respond to the needs and demands of the public, right? Like, whoever thinks that private banks are a good idea, like, that's nuts. That's crazy to think about, that there's, like, some just private owner who literally could destroy a town to make money uh, and just shrug and be like, oh, well, those people, they'll, they'll die, I guess, right? <laughs> Whereas a publicly owned bank would probably be like, uh, no, like, that would be a massive colossal disaster for the people living there and fundamentally and ultimately like we've gotten so used to having this kind of faux democratic process that we don't really want to think about what an actual democratic process would look like like here in toronto like I have a city councillor, but they take care of 200,000 people. That's way too many people, man. Like, we need to have, like, representatives for every thousand people. Like, we need to, that's how, like, that's the scale that I'm talking about, right? Like, we need to, we need to include layers of democratic organization within the process to allow decisions to be made, like, uh, uh, there's, there, there's perpetually empty spaces on the street here, right? So if you're an entrepreneur and you just want to open up a business, right? Well, how do you get, how do you get that space? Well, you just ask the people who live in the community, right? Right now we don't have the system in place to do that because uh, capitalists don't want people to be able to organize democratically. Are you kidding me? But if, if we had people, like if we had a representative that dealt with literally this block, right? If that was their job, was to deal with this block right here uh, and to deal with the problems that came up and to organize and to, and to have things structured, uh, literally an entrepreneur who wants to open up a business could be like, there is an empty space there. Here is my plan. Uh, go talk to your local representative and uh, work with them to move forward. And literally just like ask the community if they want that business there. And if the community does, they'll be like, yeah, sure. You can run that. Why not? Off you go. <laughs> Off you go. Uh, sure, we'll have a coffee shop there. Why not? Off you go then. And if, uh, uh, and if they don't want it there, then they'll say no. Right? The, uh, to me, I, 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 I just think that there's been so much propaganda that has been spread out into the world about people need to have, uh, like, if you can't make a hundred million dollars doing it, you'll never do it. 
uh, I just don't think people operate that way. I just don't think they think that way. Uh, I think that people uh, want to be respected in their community. I think people want to do things to help their community. I think that people walk around and they see opportunities, but the reason why they can't act on them in a capitalist society is because they can't convince a billionaire to invest in it. And, and sometimes, like, billionaires have all kinds of perverse incentives, right? Like, if you're a billionaire and you own a property, right, well, you don't need to rent it out, right? Uh, the, the, the capitalist myth is that, well, of course a capitalist will rent that space out or else he'll lose money. Ah. But if you have a billion dollars, you don't give a fuck. Like, you don't give a fuck. You have a billion dollars and you have, like, an empty rental space, right? Okay. Well, I'm not going to, like, negotiate with some, like, you know, college kids who want to open up a board game cafe, right, in, a, in, in an area and who are saying, like, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll, we can pay, like, $5,000 a month of rent. No, nah, fuck that. I'm not even going to bother getting into negotiations with somebody unless I'm talking to, like, a massive corporation, right? Uh, and they're going to pay me, like, $30,000 a month in rent. I'm a billionaire. I don't give a shit. I don't care about you college kids. Go away. I don't care that it's going to improve the community. I don't care that that space is an eyesore. It's just sitting there empty. Who cares? Uh, I don't care that somebody moves in there and within six months the business collapses because my rent is $30,000 a month. I don't care about that at all. Right? Instead, instead of this billionaire who's sitting on an empty property, right? So the property itself uh, should be under control of the people. Right? You have an empty property, right? Uh, honestly, private property in general, I'm, I'm against. But, but you should have... Uh, uh, the people who live in the community should have some say about what's happening with commercial property, right? I mean, I think they should have the same kind of thing about residential property, but that, that's fine. We're talking about commercial property. So commercial property should be under control of the people, and... People should ask permission to their representatives who should represent a much smaller portion of the populace than they do right now, right? And the people themselves uh, who then move in to the space, right, after they get permission from the community, right, which I think is completely rational to ask permission from the community if they even want this to be here. I mean... I feel like that's actually so much nicer, right? Like so many people move in to business spaces uh, because they got the capital and they convinced some business owner or some capitalist or something like this. Uh, so they convinced one or two people uh, that what they've got is a good idea, but they never ask the populace. So they're just guessing. They're just sort of hoping. There's they got a if you build it, they will come sort of attitude. Whereas if you actually like go to a town hall meeting, you put on the agenda, hey. I'm John Sanderson. I'd like to open a board game cafe in this space that is currently empty. Uh, or, uh, uh, you know, uh, would we prefer to have a board game cafe in this space instead of this other thing that is there currently? And we can talk about it as a community. And because the representatives are, it's not, instead of it being 200,000 people, one person has jurisdiction over, it'll be like a thousand or 2000 people they have jurisdiction over because it's just one block. And they all talk about it, and they and, and, and they uh, get to it. Maybe the representative goes and talks to the representative of the next neighbor over and says, like, hey, we're thinking of putting this in this space. What do you guys think? And if they're like, oh, yeah, that's great. We love that. Uh, or if they have, like, concerns or anything like that, they can talk about it uh, and maybe bring it up to the next representative, right? And if this sounds like an involved process, yeah, caring about each other is an involved process. It's an involved process to give a shit about one another, okay? If you don't give a shit about one another, then you deal with the consequences of that which is you having a billionaire stomp on your face. Uh, uh, so the entrepreneur, right? So let's say the, pe the, the people are like, yeah, we love that idea. That's great. Move into that space. So the people move into that space. And then ostensibly the people who are running whatever enterprise is in that space, I've been saying board game cafe a lot. So let's stick with that. Will be the beneficiaries of that. They'll be the ones that'll make the money. Why shouldn't they? They're the ones doing the work, right? So, uh, and they'll, they'll be the ones that take the shot, that, that make the shots. They'll be the ones that do it. Uh, uh, and they'll do so democratically, right? Instead of it being like an owner who hires wage slaves in order to do it, just everybody who's involved in it gets a share of 
what's going on in that uh, space. And of course, I think that the shares should be distributed based strictly on time. So if 100 hours get worked and I work 50 of those 100 hours, then I should get 50% of the shares. And if you work 10 hours of that 100 hours, then you should get 10% of the shares. And that really is straightforward how it should look, that our time is what should equal shares. And of course, that formulation would be much more complex, but, uh, uh, but ostensibly it's exactly the idea that like, at the end of the year, you calculate and tally, okay, this guy worked this much, this guy worked this much, this guy worked this much, so that means they get this share of whatever. And of course, if you want to add like a little bit of stability and you can sort of pepper in a, a kind of a wage in order to add a general stability to that so that you're not, you know, doing your wage calculation at the end of the year. So you just do a wage and then you do your calculation at the end of the year and you go like, okay, so you had this wage and then plus this much in terms of your share, right? And that's the way how I think the whole thing should be organized. You should go to your representative who speaks with the community and you in order to come to an agreement about whether or not the, uh, we can move into this space, right, based on what the community thinks. And then the representative and you work with the publicly owned bank, which is owned by the public, in order to cr create the capital to get you started, right, to put it forward. Uh, and then the people who actually run the enterprise are the ones who uh, 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 own the place and make the decisions democratically. And that's what I think it would look like in, in a uh, non-capitalist society, that the workers would run the place uh, uh, negotiating with the uh, elected representatives who would represent a much smaller portion of the society, because not every decision needs to be made on the national or provincial uh, or even municipal level. Like I think the mun municipalities in this uh, democratic system that we operate on are huge. They're way too big. They're way, 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 way too big. And it's telling that it's conservatives that will keep wanting to make them bigger and bigger. Because, you know, conservative politicians only really negotiate with billionaires. They don't really talk to workers. Like, they don't actually care about workers. It's obvious. Uh, so in a non-capitalist society, I'll just state it again as cleanly as I can. In a non-capitalist society, I have an idea for a business. I would go to my elected representative to have the idea put on the docket for a town hall meeting. We would negotiate, debate with the people themselves who are at the town hall meeting, and everyone's free to come, and everyone's free to vote on this. Everyone's free to be involved in this. Uh, uh, if they say no, or if they uh, 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 put forward concerns about what it is, then it gives you the opportunity to address them until eventually, perhaps you give up because, I mean, or you move to a different community because you, you really do want to do this, but the community doesn't want to have it done. Uh, or uh, the community says yes. And so then you, you, with the representative, your elected representative, and with the pow power of the people behind you, because they say we want to have it in there, you go to the public bank, which is owned by the people, right? And they provide the capital to be able to get you started on, on that system. And again, to remind you, money can just be created out of nothing. It just comes out of thin air. That's what we do now, right? That's what the private banks do now. So it's not extreme to say that this is what the public bank will do. It's just instead of it being done for a profit motive, it's being done because everybody wants it to happen. Because everybody wants it, right? You went to the people, you asked them, they said yes. Uh, everybody wants it, you move into the space, right? And of course it's going to be filled with nonsense. Of course there's going to be debating and back and forth and hemming and hawing and all that kind of stuff, right? But... Uh, uh, People won't be able to just override the will of the populace. You won't. You, if I walked up to the populace and said, "Hey, I've got this great industry idea, but it's going to dump a bunch of toxic waste into the river," people say no, <laughs> right? People say no. Instead of what happens now, which is, well, I'm dumping all this toxic waste in the river, but my billionaire lives in the next state over, so he doesn't care, right? Like, we, uh, uh, anyway, Ward. I hope that that's something of an answer for what you're talking about. That's mainly entrepreneurs, uh, project managers. Oh, so project managers, very briefly. I mean, 
uh, uh, so let's say you get into the space, right? And you're organizing your people that you're working with. Well, the people are going to pick their project manager, right? They're going to elect their, pri their, their project manager. They're going to say, uh, uh, Okay, so uh, we'll 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 be the front of house people. You be the back house person, and and Joe, you'll be the project manager, right? And maybe Joe and Steve put their name forward for project manager, and everybody goes, you know what? We're gonna pick Joe for this. And then maybe in a year's time, people will go like, you know, Joe, yeah, I just think maybe we'll give Steve a shot, right? Or maybe they could just both do it for Christ's sakes, right? If they both want to be involved in it, it just it just seems to me that a lot of the organization could and should be happening democratically, that people should be more invested and should be uh, uh, able to talk about this kind of stuff. And, and before we go like, whoa, everybody discussing everyone, so what's, I'm essentially describing a co-op system, right? It's, it, it's not that big a deal. It's happened all over, right? Co-ops exist everywhere. We just haven't accepted that it's a superior model and that we need to banish the capitalist system completely. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I think that's going to be the end of me, guys. I think I'm going to go get some food. I hope you're all having a fun time out there. Ward, I hope that answered your question at all. Like, share, subscribe, send it around, do all the stuff. I'm almost at 70 subscribers, guys. Come on. get Just, just get one of your random friends to subscribe. They don't even need to watch my stuff. <laughs> anyway, guys, I love you all. Have fun out there, okay? <laughs>